Good morning and welcome back to Notorious Pro Wrestling, the TEW Let's Play series where we find out what exactly would happen if Conor McGregor started his own wrestling promotion. This is episode 30. Episode 30. Wow. 30 weeks of this. That's kind of mental to think. Um, I say good morning because this is probably the earliest I've ever done a recording of this. Um, it's like 9 in the morning. <laughs> Which you normally I would be in work, but yeah. So I suppose a little bit of behind the, st the scenes ska. Um, I've pretty much just been like scrapping and clawing to try and get like a new episode out for I don't know, like four or five weeks. Like normally I get myself like I usually record in batches of four and then up and then get them edited and then get them all uploaded and that gives me like four weeks to chill and like kind of do some stuff and not have to worry about recording now. Um, but now. With a full-time job, which I've been in for like a month, nearly two, two months. Um, yeah, not as much time to record. <laughs> so literally get to the weekend, I can maybe get like two episodes done, and then I get them edited, and then I get them up, and it only gives me like really a week's respite before <laughs> I can like have the record again. But I have some time off, so I'm gonna knock out. Uh, I did the the last episode, which was August week three. Uh, wanted and did that a couple of days ago and then I got to do three episodes today and then that'll be me for like another four weeks get to chill a bit fully re-energize and come back harder than ever because I want I want to go up to a small size company instead of being tiny um, we are not far off we're only about four points of popularity away um, and the way we've been going uh, with such strong shows, we've been like going up. So at, at least one every single, far the start, just because we have no momentum. Um, but at least one every month. Um, so I would like to think, knock on wood, that in four months' time, which will be December. Oh, December! So going into 2022, I would like to think we will be a small size company. But enough of the backstage stuff. Let's talk about news. And uh, in terms of our company, there's not really much going on. Uh, in terms of the world, a little bit's been happening, especially in NXT. So, Adam Cole is the new NXT champion after the title was vacated by Tommaso Ciampa because he got called up to the main roster. That took place at Toronto, which looked like it was a solid show, 67. Moving on, uh, the other bit from NXT was new tag champs as the kings of NXT, Pat McAfee and Pete Dunn beat the Undisputed Era. Um, that's a thing that <laughs> happened. Pat McAfee, NXT tag champ. God, I love AI booking. So as I said, the last time you guys were here was August week three, which was a pretty stacked wanted card. Um, <clears throat> If we just take a look at it here, you know, we had every single title being defended due to the fact that NXT UK has continued to double book a lot of our stars, um, which is something I actually want to talk about next episode. Um, but overall, it was a good show. 59, which is probably our best wanted. Uh, no, it wasn't. Our best wanted was back in June. Uh, wow, that wasn't even close to our best wanted. That was our... <laughs> Wow, okay. I thought our, that was like one of our best wanted. It's not it's like our fifth best wanted. But there you go. Um, but it was a good stack card. So, so we had every title defended. Chris here defended against Carlos Romo. Uh, the Grizzly Young Vets won the tag team tournament uh, by turning heel on the Mighty Don't Kneel. Um, Viper defeated Alpha Female to retain the Women's Championship. So as always with our pay-per-views, I'm going to do a rundown of the matches and the storylines leading into them. In tag team action, we are going to have to Neil Dashwood and Zia Brookside versus Riho and Maki Ito. After losing her feud to Alpha Female, To Neil Dashwood told Zia Brookside that she is too nice and lacks that killer instinct to get the job done, much like To Neil during her NXT run as Emma. As Zia gained more losses and To Neil gained more wins, Zia started to come around to her way of thinking and agreed to listen and be mentored by To Neil Dashwood. So the first challenge for this mentorship is Maki Ito and Rio, who have had dealings with Tessa Blanchard up until recently. Maki Ito and Rio have been having issues with Killer Kelly. He's been definitely living up to your killer name by attacking both the Jushi wrestlers after their matches. 
Can they put that aside tonight to take on this new mentorship team? Speaking of Killer Kelly, she will go one-on-one with Maiko Satomura. As previously stated, Killer Kelly has been attacking the Joshi wrestlers after losses to them, proving that she is a psycho killer she claims to be. Coming to the aid of Maki Ito and Riho, Maiko Satomura takes on the psycho killer Killer Kelly. Tonight, the blow-off match to one of our longest-running feuds in the company. Grado Talent Agency is taking on Dynasty one last time. Let's take you way, way back to when Dynasty first formed and made Grado's life a living hell. Injuring Grado and limiting his in-ring capacity, putting him into the role of a manager. Grado then started his talent agency, recruiting... Amir Jordan, Kenny Williams, and finally the crown jewel of the talent agency, Mark Andrews. After getting an upset win over Dynasty in the tag team tournament, we thought this feud was over. However, not all is well in the world of GTA, as since the signing of Mark Andrews, Kenny Williams seems to be out of sorts. Can the Grado talent agency put these issues aside and slay? their long rivals dynasty one last time and in our main event chris hero and easton reese versus ace austin and carlos romo ace and romo were not attracted to each other that's not the way you want to say that uh, <laughs> the two cocky youths join forces and have been pretty good to be fair uh pretty good even going as far for Carlos Romo to pick up a non-title pinfall victory over NPW champion Chris Hero after the debut of Will Hobbs as Ace and Carlos Enforcer. This led to a title match at August Week 3's Wanted where Chris Hero was actually able to defend the title against Carlos Romo. But the heels were not happy and attacked the champion after the match until Easton Reese made the save. Yes, how does Easton Reese fit into all this? Well, back in July, Easton Reese realized he, although he was good, he could be better. Never really able to win the big one. So he reached out to the newly retired Doug Williams. And thus began the Coach Doug storyline. Doug Williams is currently training Easton Reese, and we've been getting a series of Rocky style montages of these two trying to get Easton Reese to the next level. But is Easton, who's still technically a heel, just using Doug to try and further his career? And that is the card for the Wind Your Neck In pay per view. So let's book it, shall we? And we are back, coming at you from the Belfast Black. Box. It is the Notorious Pro Wrestling's Wind Your Neck In, and let's get into it right away because it, uh, you may have already seen the spoiler of who the master is. If, if not, then don't go back and look. Don't. Just wait for the big reveal. Um, so, on the pre show, then we had Will Hobbs get a bit of momentum by beating Dean Allmark. Uh, he pretty much just squashed him. He beat him with a frog splash. Is that something Will Hobbs does? Damn, that's impressive. Uh, Will Hobbs had a 48, which is pretty good. Um, and Dean Allmark had a 47, which is pretty good. Uh, all knows a 39, which is disappointing. I would say it's probably limited by the fact it was only 10 minutes. And another pre-show match, uh, the Light Coast Gym, who will be sl- featured a wee bit more, got a bit more momentum by beating the NIC in 1759. Uh, Kid Light Coast carried it uh so kid like had a 44 or sorry junior had a 44 Lagos had a 56 carter had a 40 and delaney had a 49 guessing the guys don't have that i put them for yeah just shy of 20 or 18 minutes um but clearly they don't have the psychology to kind of carry that length of match which is a bit disappointing oh well it was on the pre-show uh, 38 overall Backstage then, <clears throat> Jen Louise interviews the Filthy Generation and Kelly Ray pretty much just insults Female and Viper and says neither of them are fit enough to be champion, it should be Kelly Ray. This is just a kind of... So brutal honesty, I ran out of uh, ideas <laughs> for the Alpha Female and Viper <laughs> storyline, so I'm going to just kind of go for like a triple threat <laughs> down the line. So in a match again, just to give Kelly Ray a bit more momentum, leaning into her, being reintroduced into the title feud, uh, Kelly Ray defeated Amy Alonzi in 20 minutes with a gory bomb. 42 match was good, uh, Kelly Ray carried it, 
and Amy Lanzi is just there as jobber fodder. So, we're on to the main card. Uh, Dynasty. And about to have fantastic heat and good wrestling, Dynasty defeated Great Otalinji in 1437 when Joe Henning pinned Amir Jordan with a McGill cutter. Now, there's a reason for this, and that is because Kenny Williams walks out on Amir Jordan halfway through the match. Uh, we will handle the heel turn in a second. David Boy Smith uh, had a 51, which is awesome. Joe Henry has 52, which is awesome. Kenny Williams with a 41, which is okay. And Jimmy Jordan 39, which is not great. I knew we were going to take, take a hit on the chemistry between Jordan and Williams, but we needed it for storyline purposes. So, yeah. Thankfully, it didn't seem to affect the rating too badly. Uh, now the turn. We'll turn him heel. And so Kenny Williams is now using the bollocks uh, gimmick. So that was his gimmick in ICW, was uh, the bollocks Kenny Williams. Um, his rating is likely to rise over time. He got great, which is good. Uh, charisma is not great. Kenny Williams doesn't have great charisma anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. And But it's marketable. I mean, who doesn't want a t-shirt with the bollocks on it? Who doesn't? But there you go. Kenny Williams is now split away from Great Hotel and the agency. I think that only lasted like a couple of months. <laughs> so, hey ho. So yes, in the ring, Great Hotel agency are left stunned. Grado and Mark Andrews, you know, console Amir Jordan, who's still like knocked out. While Kenny Williams is on the ramp screaming at them that he is not a sidekick. He is the star. So next up, tag action uh, in a bite that had great heat and good wrestling. Riho and Makito defeated Tenille Dashwood and Zia Brookside in 1940 when Makito pinned Zia Brookside with a DDT. Uh, Zia had 37, she was always going to be the weakest link. Uh, Tenille had a 49 which is good, Makito had a 47 which is good and Riho had a 44 which is not bad. 45 overall which is, yep, yeah, I'll take 45. Uh, that's in the performance parameters. Uh, Makito has a strong connection with the young female demographic and Makito has a grand way. So back here, he's got all these benefits thrown on her at the minute. Uh, Rio was off her game. That's true. Rio would normally be kind of on par with Makito um, in terms of performance. So, say this was a story. This match, kind of what would happen during it is that, you know, Tenille's using all these dirty tactics, you know, breaking the eyes, raking the back, stomping the toe, biting fingers, you know, all that good shit. Uh, but Zia just won't play ball doing that sort of thing. And that uh, ends up costing the match. The bickering between these two ends up costing them the match. So after the match then, um, Maki Ito and Riho are celebrating on the stage while Tanil and Zia are arguing in the ring following their loss and Tanil slaps Zia and, and you know, screaming like, you know, you wanted this, you wanted me to mentor you, do what I say. Tanil orders Zia to the back and she does so downheartedly. Uh, 52 for that, which is pretty good. Next up then, in a good match, Michael Satamore defeated Killer Kelly in 1940 with a frog splash. Why is everyone using a frog splash? Jesus. Uh, Killer Kelly had an in-ring performance of 35. Kelly still just not doing well with her in-ring performances. That's really disappointing. And uh, Michael Satamore had 56, which is god tier. Uh, 49 overall, obviously Michael really dragged the match out of Killer Kelly. Post-match then, uh, Tessa Blanchard returns. Yes, she's back. The bitch is back. Uh, and she attacks Maiko Satamora. Riho and Maki are right to try and make the save, but Killer Kelly fends them off because they're still beaten down and sore from their match previously. And then, and then, fucking Crazy Mary Dobson is back in wrestling. Yeah, we'll get to that afterwards. I kind of kept that one on the DL. Um, yeah, so this is not fucking... Sarah Rowe or whatever the fuck her name was Sarah Logan this is not Sarah Logan for WWE this is fucking crazy Mary Dobson she's back in wrestling and she's back here in NPW and she makes the save for the faces whooping Tessa and Killer Kelly's fucking asses while doing so uh, she debuted her wild one gimmick got great of course it did 51 segment fucking right in a backstage promo then, Jennifer Louise interviews Ace Austin, Carlos Romo and Will Hobbs who say the old men, Reese and Chris Hero, need to make way for the future of professional wrestling. Also backstage, Jen interviews Chris Hero and Easton Reese. Um, Chris Hero and Easton Reese says they're going to slap some respect into those young punks, Ace and Carlos. Uh, 51 overall, which is good. 
And in the main event, an exceptional match, Ace Romo. Ace Romo defeated Chris Hero and Easton Reese in 23-01 when Ace pinned Chris Hero after the fold. So Carlos got a 60, uh, Ace got a 51, Reese got a 45 and Hero got a 57. Um, Reese is hinting at having a face turn. Great chemistry between Romo and Austin. I've actually didn't think about this um, with Doug now managing Reese they're on different sides of the heel face divide I am planning on turning Reese face but I wasn't going to do it until the next pay-per-view it's all right it's not a massive thing uh, 54 which is not great uh, it's in the boundaries it's in the boundaries of where it should be but for a pay-per-view we usually like 60 I like a 60 we haven't had a good Conor McGregor promo. This could be one of our worst pay-per-views of all time. That, yeah, <laughs> that's not good. Um, but anyway, yes. Yeah, so uh, the face was lost. So this was due to miscommunication by Hero and Race. So Race would have accidentally hit Hero with a spear, leading to uh, Carlos getting the pin. Or sorry, with Ace getting the pin. The reason why I'm doing this is because it kind of, with Race still being heel. You can make the argument, oh, you know, maybe he meant to do that. And we'll have actually return uh, next week of someone kind of calling him out, being like, you know, I think you're, I think this is all ploy. I think you're just using Doug uh, to get where you want. And I think you speared Chris on purpose last night, um, sort of thing. So, but we're not done. Oh, no, 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 we're not done. So, after the match, the lights go out and the master appears. And the master is. Jake the Snake Roberts. When they come back up, you have Sonico there, you have Penta there, and a man in the uh, in robes. Robes drop, and Jake Roberts is revealed to be the master. He then drops Chris here with a DDT. Yeah, so he drops Chris here with a DDT, and then Penta and Sonico attack uh, Doug and Easton, and just destroy them. Uh, so Jake has debuted the master gimmick. Very good. Uh, that is it, the Master's finally revealed, so, Jake Roberts, so he has been sitting and catering for, I uh, fucking months, <laughs> months and months and months, uh, eagle-eyed viewers will probably have seen his name pop up and are probably not shocked, um, the main reason we brought him in was because we needed a mouthpiece for Penta, uh, Penta has now since learned English, apparently, and, uh, might not need it anymore, but, I think, J like, the Jake Roberts is one, obviously, very good on, on the mic, uh, two, He's a legend as well, which you know brings a bit of credibility to NPW with his overness. On top of that, he can kind of play that creepy because obviously the master and like Penta and Sonic are doing the whole lights out gimmick. It's all like creepy stuff and kind of, kind of like leaning towards a cult but not fully a cult. And Jake can play that sort of character. Uh, in fact, the master is an, an an occult gimmick. I think Jake will now manage both Penta and Sonico. I think Sonico probably doesn't need it anymore um, now that he's learned English, or sorry, Penta doesn't need it anymore now that he's learned English, he is still quite charismatic, but Sonico is not great on the mic and is technically still a mid-carder, so if we stick Jake with Sonico, it gives him a mouthpiece, but yeah, so that is uh, the wind your neck in pay-per-view, I don't think it's going to be very good, if I'm brutally honest, I think it will be mid-50s, yeah, I think it's going to be mid-50s. If not, maybe a bit lower. 54? Yeah, mid-50s. Um, we had no Conor McGregor promo. Uh, just didn't feel the need for one. I didn't think we needed one. But clearly we did. So news coming out of Wind Your Neck In. Uh, SummerSlam happened. Uh, got, Jesus, got 70. That's really good. <laughs> wow, that's really good. Uh, Kevin Owens, 81. Roman Reigns, a fiend. Yeah, so very, very good. Uh, yeah, and Kevin Owens won the WWE title. Well done, Kevin. I don't think he's ever won the WWE title. It's always been the Universal title. So that's pretty dope. Nick Jackson must have been injured at some point. And Alexa Bliss is Raw Women's Champion. But yes, uh, the main news we probably want to talk about is actually... So yeah, Mary Dobson came back. Or, or Sarah Rowe, I suppose, came back into wrestling. Um, she came back uh, August week one, so at the start of the month. And yeah, the minute I saw her pop up as returning, I was like, yeah, she needs to come to us. So... She has a some sort of martial arts background. She is a bit of a striker, um, which I thought would fit in perfectly with us. 
I've always had a soft spot for her. Like, I think WWE really misused her with the whole, like, Sarah Logan stuff. Like, I've always, like, her Crazy Mary Dobson stuff was awesome. Like, it was really, really cool. She did so much stuff across all the world on the indie scene. Um, so, yeah, I'm really, really excited to have her on board, and I think she's going to be awesome. Maybe a future world champion, or maybe a future women's champion. Maybe, but I'm not sure yet. So, I already know who the next one's going to be. My next women's champion is going to be, and that will happen in the next couple of months. Uh, I also know who the next MPW champion is going to be, and that could happen sooner than you think. Um, that is all for this week. Uh, you guys will be back next week as you will deal with the fallout from Wind Your Neck In, and we will look at the storylines um, going forward to the next pay per view, which is Banjaxed. So, as always, if you have enjoyed this, please consider subscribing, uh, giving this video a like. And if you have any ideas about any storylines, feuds, gimmicks, tag teams, stables, you name it, I will try book it. And with that all said, I will see you next time on Bash Bros.